A degree from BC for me means new beginnings, new doors being opened, um, new successes, new adventures. 
I would like to thank God, my husband as well. I want to thank my family, my kids. Uh, they're my motivation to continue going. And um, my mom, my brothers, for believing in me. Um, a degree from Brazosport College means everything to me because I've been able to stay local and still be able to work while going to school full time. Um, I really like the small classes and the ability to have a close relationship with all of my instructors. I would like to thank uh, my fire department, my mom, my dad. Um, they really supported me through all of, the, all of the classes and whatnot. I'd like to thank my amazing wife for keeping the bills paid while I was able to go to school and get my degree. Uh, I'd also like to thank my brother-in-law for pursuing this with me. Uh, he's been a great help and a good friend. I would like to thank my wife, my kids, my family, my brother-in-law that helped me along the way, and just uh, ev everyone that helped push me to go back to college to get this degree to help better my family's life. I give my appreciation to all the professors. I feel like a lot of them have went above and beyond to help me succeed. Um, I feel like they really do care, and that means a lot to me. I'm really proud that I'm finally graduating. <laughs> and it's uh, pretty big for me because uh, I have, uh, I'm dyslexic, so it's really hard for me for especially what I went for. And I, it made me overachieve something that I couldn't, I thought I would never do. I would say to someone think about attending BC, go for it. Whether you sign up or not, time passes. So you might as well be filling that time with great opportunities. Coming back at 52 was a challenge for me, but uh, I made it through, so NBC uh, did that for me. Got great instructors. Uh, Dr. Cooper Sweat is an awesome instructor, uh, so I would encourage anyone that's uh, thinking about it or you know have any doubts to go ahead and just step out on faith and uh, get her done, because uh, BC can make it happen for you. Start now, because your life is going to be passing you by so fast. Every year gets faster and tougher to go back. So that's why I made the decision in starting now and continuing. Even if I do not want to go, I still wake up every day and continue on my journey. But I can do something different in my life. Just taking it day by day, just like my husband, he'll be starting hopefully next semester. I want him to get his degree too, even though we're older, you're never too old to get that degree or education. I want to thank my kids for supporting me and telling me that I had what it takes to do this. It's pretty scary to go back to school when you're as old as I am, but if there's anybody out there who is in their 40s or 50s, do not give up on yourself. It's, like I said, never too late. And my fiance has just been so supportive and awesome through this whole process. I would say go for it because it's a good opportunity, especially if you're not ready to leave home and your parents or your family or friends. So if you're thinking about going to BC, don't think too long because BC is a lot of fun. You learn a lot of stuff. There's a lot of professors, counselors, students as well that can help you get through it. You know, I would like to thank my mom and dad for continuing to support me and push me and also just the instructors here at the uh, college to continuing to uh, just encourage me and give me good education and knowledge. Instructors are wonderful. Uh, for example, Dr. Smith, Dr. Quay, they always care about their students. Also, Ms. Schrader. Um, so those are some of the instructors that I have met that they always go way beyond to help their students. I would like to thank all my friends and family as well as my professors and my bosses here at the college. I'd like to thank all the instructors here at uh, BC and uh, thank you so much for your help and uh, being a great support. Thank you for your patience. A degree from BC means a home. It means, it means my daughter gets to be happy. It means I get to be independent. I would like to thank my parents and my brother. So I'm very grateful because they worked probably 16, 18, 20 hour shifts just so I could get an education. I would like to thank my friends, family, and bosses here at BC. Yeah, to me, it means uh, like a big step in my life, a big dream come, come true. 
because I uh, come from another country and it has been very hard for me. So I would like to thank my daughters, my husband, my parents, all my family and wonderful friends. I would like to thank my parents who motivated me to get another degree after pursuing my instrumentation or, electric, or my instrumentation degree. I would like to thank my parents for being so supportive, um, my fiance for staying up with me late at night studying, and just for all my family for always supporting me. A degree from BC means a lot to me, but also to my family. I am the first college graduate in my family, so this means a lot to not only me, but to my family, like I said again, and it's just a big blessing. A degree from BC means to me that I'll be one of the first people in my family to um, have a degree, and that's kind of a big deal for me. Um, so I'm just really excited to, to get started in my career in nursing. A degree from BC means a lot to me because as a high school student, I was able to get my Associates of Science by the time that I graduated high school. And that means a lot to my family because I'm the first one in my family to go to college. So I have accomplished something big for my family, especially being a son of an immigrant who came from Mexico. It feels like, it makes it feel like her, her sacrifice was not in vain and she, I was able to make it mean something. I was a teen mom. I had my daughter when I was 15 and society basically told me that I would fail, that she would fail, um, that I would just be another statistic that dropped out of school and didn't accomplish anything. And here I stand today, graduating, and my daughter that I had at 15 is a sophomore and also in dual credit classes at BC. So this is like a win-win for my whole family. Even if you think you can't do it, you can. There's plenty of people on campus to always help. All you have to do is ask. A degree from BC gave me the opportunity to work on my college classes while I was in high school. Um, and it allows me to go to a four-year university already ahead. I would say to take advantage of the courses, especially as it will be very helpful once you transfer and save your parents lots of money as well as it'll give you the opportunity to make more connections as well with the professors and staff members. They can also be very helpful within that process of transferring. My parents, they've helped me tremendously to get into this, to motivate me. I've had wonderful professors and uh, teachers, great advisors, um, but PTK, our members and our officers, they're excellent. Jonathan Andrade, thank you so much. I want to thank my family and friends and co-workers for putting up with me through this journey. It's been a long journey, hard, and I guess the special people in my life that have really supported and pushed me to make it this far. I would like to thank my family for helping me when they can. I'd like to thank my family and my love for always pushing me to do my best and to never give up. I'd also like to thank my parents for supporting me through my entire college career. Gracias a mis padres que son mi mejor soporte. Gracias a mis siblings y a mis amigas. Los amo. I want to thank my mom. Of course, you're my number one fan, my number one supporter. I want to thank my dad. You've been amazing in helping me along the way. I'd like to thank my family, my mom and dad, my brothers, my sister, grandparents, my boss, my amazing girlfriend. I'd like to thank my lovely wife for always standing by my side and pushing me to be better. And I'd love to thank my parents for always supporting me um, and my brother. I would like to thank my husband as well and my parents and my children. And I would also like to thank uh, Phil Robertson, Arnold Ramirez, and the whole counseling and testing staff. I would like to thank my family. It was a big sacrifice to join to start school again. and. Uh, there was a lot of studying involved, and sometimes I was unavailable, but they were uh, supportive of me. For those that are thinking about attending BC, stop thinking and do. It was the best decision that I ever made. BC really is the college of choice. They give you so many choices here, so many opportunities, so many services. The campus here is phenomenal. The staff, the administrators are all about the students and our success.
Ladies and gentlemen, the faculty and staff of Brazosport College. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the 2022 Brazosport College graduating class. Thank mm-hmm. you. 
Good morning. You may be seated. I'm Vincent Solis and I'm the president of Brazosport College. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you to our 2022 commencement ceremony. Today's activities serve as a culmination of a successful path of study and persistence for our graduates, their families, and their friends. At this time, Will you please rise for the invocation got given by Dr. R Ryan Lintelman, pastor of First Baptist Church of West Columbia. After the invocation, please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance to be led by Darlene Hurd. Let's pray. Father, we are thankful this morning, thankful that you care about our minds as you have called us to love you with all of our heart soul, mind, and strength. I thank you for these students who have engaged their minds and have come to a point of completion in their program. Maybe, maybe a first step, maybe a last step, but God, we praise you that they have made it this far. And God, I pray that you would use them as they go from here, that what they've studied and learned would become useful as they provide for their families, as they seek to achieve great things, and God, as they seek to serve others. And I pray that this class would make a difference in our community, that they would be a light in a world that's growing ever darker. And I thank you for their families that have supported them. I pray, God, that you would, you would continue to bless them and that this degree would be a blessing to their family. I thank you for those that are achieving this for the first time in their family. And I pray they would begin a legacy of love of education. And God, I uh, thank you for the faculty and instructors, the board, the president of this school, and the way they reach out into our community to provide something uh, that can be very difficult to obtain. 
And I pray that you would continue to bless the school and use it. And so, God, we are so thankful to you. We pray that all that is done here and said is is pleasing to you. And we pray, God, I pray again for these students that you would bless them today, on their day. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. I ask that we remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance, which is going to be led by Ms. Darlene Hurd, President of the Brazosport College Student Government Association. Please join me in saying the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and you may be seated. <laughs> Good morning, my name is Tracy Watts, and I am the Vice President of College Advancement here at Brazosport College. I want to add my personal congratulations to all of our graduates this morning. On behalf of the Brazosport College faculty and staff, I can say without a doubt that we are so very proud of you and all of your accomplishments. It is my privilege this morning to introduce those that are seated on the stage and also special guests that are seated in the audience. I would like to begin with those on the stage with the first row of guests behind me on my right, your left. I would ask each person to stand as I call your name and then you may be seated. Please hold your applause until all are introduced. Mrs. Carolyn Johnson, Chair of the Brazosport College Board of Regents. Dr. Vincent Solis, President, Brazosport College. Mr. Robert Perryman, Vice Chair of the Brazosport College Board of Regents. Mrs. Lisa Templer, Vice President of Financial Services and CFO. Mrs. Ann Bartlett, Vice President of Industry and Community Resources. Mr. Marshall Campbell, Vice President of Human Resources and Dr. Shelley Diveny, Vice President of Academic and Student Affairs. On the upper row, again, starting at the far right, my right, your left, Mr. these are members of the Brazosport College Board of Regents, Mr. Roland Hendricks, Mr. Jason Cordoba, Mr. Ron Barksdale, Mr. Danny Yates, Mrs. Jennifer Monocle, Mr. Jay Gibson, and the 2022 Teaching Excellence Award recipient, BC faculty member, Mrs. Alicia De Leon. Please join me in welcoming our platform party. We also have a number of special guests seated in the front row section on my right. These are guests of our platform party and individuals who have a part in this morning's celebration. Please join me in recognizing our special guest. And now at this time, will you please help me introduce Mrs. Ann Bartlett, Vice President of Industry and Community Resources to introduce our commencement speaker. Mrs. Bartlett. Good morning, everyone. It is my privilege to introduce our 2022 commencement speaker, Dr. Vincent Solis. Dr. Vincent Solis is a life lifelong educator with almost three decades of service in higher education. More than half of the years he has spent in higher education have been in senior or executive roles. He has served as chief academic officer, chief enrollment officer, and chief student success officer. Dr. Solis began his post-secondary education at a community college and later transitioned to Texas A&M Kingsville, where he received his Bachelor's of Arts in Psychology and Sociology, graduating with honors, his Master's of Science in Psychology, and his Doctorate in Bilingual Education. 
Dr. Solis has also been honored to share his own experiences and educational journey with many different students' audiences. As the youngest of 11 children of migrant workers and a high school dropout, Dr. Solis shares his story of the transformative power that education can have on an individual. Please help me welcome to the podium, Dr. Vincent Solis. Good morning. Buenos dias. My name is Vince Elise, and I'm the proud president of Brazosport College, and it is an honor and a privilege for me to serve as this year's commencement speaker. This is the first time we've been back in two years. Everybody's been dealing with COVID, so it is wonderful and great to see everybody here in person. Thank you for being with us today. Before I get into my comments as a commencement speaker, I want to thank a few people for not only affording me this opportunity, but for being here and supporting these graduates to get them to this point in their educational careers. We introduced our regents earlier. I want to thank them for all of their leadership and their commitment to this institution. We could not do our work without their leadership and their commitment to our students and everything that we do that allows them to be successful. I want to thank the individuals to my right here, our faculty, our teachers, the most educated individuals in our community, most dedicated, most committed. These are individuals that we work with on a daily basis to ensure the success of our graduates. We couldn't do our work without our teachers. I want to thank all of the members of our community. The work that we do with our students and the success that culminates today could not happen without everybody in our community that contributes scholarships, that contributes partnerships, and allows us in so many ways to place our students back into the community with the skills that they need to be successful as members of our workforce. I want to thank all of the family members. Today is as much a part of your day as it is theirs because you have done so much to help these students become successful and getting them to this point in graduation. I would be remiss if I did not thank our veterans. Bernard Malmoud, who's the author of the great novel, the great American novel, The Natural, said that without our heroes, we are plain people and we don't know how far we can go without them. So to our veterans, thank you so much for allowing our freedoms and so we can pursue our dreams and our freedoms to allow us to celebrate days like this. And to our graduates, before I get into my words, I want to thank you for being members of our institution, members of our family, and I want to thank you for choosing BC as your institution of higher education. You've made it to a very special day, and I'm very privileged to be with you today. Now, as you can imagine, Having been in higher education for 30 years, I've been to a lot of graduations. I'm closing, to, uh, closing up to about 70 of these. I've seen a lot of them. I've seen some really great speakers, and I've seen some not-so-good speakers. And I always tell myself, if I ever get the honor and the privilege to serve as commencement speaker, I'm going to do it right. And I've learned over the years that there's a couple of things that, needed, that are needed to be successful as a commencement speaker. First is you've got to have a good message that, can, that graduates can relate to. The second thing is in the speech, you got to sprinkle in a little bit of laughter, and a little bit of tears. That always helps. But the most important part of being a good commencement speaker is to be a brief commencement speaker. <laughs> because all of you have parties to get to, and I know that I'm the only one that's keeping you between here and there. So I'm going to try to get that done. <laughs> but before I get there... I know that this is a really special day. A lot of work has gone into it, a lot of dedication, a lot of commitment, a lot of dreaming and working towards those dreams. This is about our students, it's about their families, it's about the communities that receive our students, and it's about lives that are changed through this thing we call education. I'm going to share some of my story as a president, the things I've done in education, but I'm also going to share, as Ms. Bartlett said, my journey as a high school dropout getting from there to here. Now, my life's work has, all been about, has been all about getting to this point. It's about educating. It's about changing lives. Because I can tell you that as a former migrant worker, it's, being better, it's, it's a lot better being the college president than a former migrant worker, right, in terms of the kind of work that we do. But it brings me great joy to see you all here. And I wanted to share some of the words, some of the wisdom that I've learned over a difficult life, over a great life, and the things that have come my way from the time that I was born to the time that I'm here with you today. I'm extremely honored to be a part of this amazing institution of higher learning. The things that we do here every single day change lives, and I'm, a big, uh, I'm, I'm really proud to be a part of that big work. 
I get to work with amazing community partners, amazing faculty. I get to hear the dreams and hopes and aspirations of our students on a daily basis. We have wonderful jobs to listen to these dreams. And students, you'd be amazed at how much we talk about you in our meetings. Everything that we do is about you. How do we get you to this point? What can we do to help you? How can we ensure your success so that then you can ensure the success of the institution and so on? But everything that we do is about getting you to this point. Now, there's a lot of things about being a college president that I enjoy. The biggest part of that is changing the lives of the people that we serve. But I am not here to speak to you as a college president. I'm here to speak to you as a high school dropout and some of the things that I've learned along my journey, and hopefully some of these words will help you on your journey. Now, I'm going to tell you the decision that I made to drop out of high school was an easy one for me. I was the youngest of 11, and I can tell you that of all of our family members, only four had ever finished high school. So for me, making the decision to drop out of school as the youngest of 13 who had seen all of those come forth before me, I thought that it was going to be an easy thing to do, and it was. One day I decided to drop out of school. My father warned me not to do it. My mother warned me not to do it. My brothers and sisters all said it's going to make your life more difficult. I didn't listen. Sometimes when you're young, we know everything, and then later on in life as we get older, we realize that we didn't know anything. The decision that I made to drop out of high school changed my life forever. And I can tell you that in the time that I dropped out of school, the next day that I did that, my father said, you've made an adult decision. You didn't listen to me, so now you've got to make adult, uh, you gotta make adult uh, choices. You've got to find a job. Now, I grew up in a place that makes Jones Creek look like New York City. They didn't have any streets, had no stores. We lived in rural, rural Texas. And I can tell you that there are no jobs in those communities. There was four streets and probably about 50 families in that little community. There were no jobs, no opportunities, so I did what anybody with no opportunities does. You get on the road and you travel. You go to different places and you do different jobs. I picked grapes. I worked in the potato fields. I worked in warehouses. I loaded trains. I did all manner of jobs that I could find simply to survive. I cleaned floors. I washed dishes. There was no shame in my game in terms of what I needed to do to survive. And I can tell you this, most of the jobs that I did were grueling, physically demanding, physically challenging. So whenever someone says, you know, I'm having a hard time sleeping or I haven't ha been able to get a good night's rest, all you do is got to dig a ditch for about six hours, seven hours, ten hours a day, and you're going to be just fine. <laughs> and I can tell you that I was really young when I was out and about traveling. I was like a modern-day Tom Sawyer, learning, meeting people, trying to figure things out. And there was one day at one of these job sites, and we were digging ditches. And this guy showed up, and he goes, I need a couple of guys that know how to drive a truck. I said, drive a truck? I'm like, yeah, driving a truck, different between digging ditches. I can drive a truck. When they dropped us off at a, at, a, at a parking lot that had a bunch of semis, I knew I was in trouble because I had never obviously driven a semi truck. <laughs> but somehow somebody gave me the keys to that truck, and I learned a lot about burning out clutches and air brakes. So I didn't last long as a truck driver. But that said, those were the kinds of things that were available to me in that space. I didn't have options. I had created a prison for myself because I didn't have an education. I had put myself in a trap that I couldn't get out of because I didn't have an education. Now, one of the things that I did, I ended up in West Texas, and I was working in the cotton fields. And this may seem like something that's like from 200 years ago, but this was in my lifetime. So I'm working in the cotton fields in West Texas, and I can tell you this. We all are familiar with Texas summers, right? But in our part of the, of the world, the summers are humid and hot. In West Texas, they're just hot. The chickens in West Texas lay hard-boiled eggs. That's how hard it is. <laughs> I kid you not, one day, I passed out from the, like, a little, like a little mini heat stroke. And I can tell you this. It's not like the movies where you, you, you pass out and you hit the, the ground in slow motion and a bunch of people show up to help you out. No one's there. And when you do, you're going to get up real quickly because the ground is hot. That's the most memorable moment that I have as part of my life there. Remember the ground being so hot that I had to get up quickly even though I had just passed out. No one there to help you. At that moment in my life, I decided that there had to be something better. There had to be something I could do to make my life better. And what I did was I got an education just like you guys are doing today. The education that you get will change your life. What you've accomplished today is going to transform your experience as a human being. Because I went from being a migrant worker working in West Texas in the cotton fields to being a college president. Learned a lot in between those spaces, but the whole idea behind an education is that it gives you not only the tools to be successful, 
but it gives you the shield that you need to protect you from the injustices of the world. Because many times we don't have any other recourse. When I was a migrant worker, they would do things to us that you would not imagine. Man can do a lot of different things to each other, and one of them is be cruel. But when you have an education and you're not in those positions, you have a better life. And that's what you've attained today. So as you head into the countless celebrations, I want you to listen to these words from a high school dropout that hopefully will help you along the way. First and foremost, as you leave here today, I want you to thank your parents and the people that have gotten you to this day. I can tell you as someone who no longer has their parents that I would do anything to be there with them today. But I can tell you this. You have an opportunity to thank your parents for everything that they've done. And Americans are interesting. After you graduate from college, I want you to think of this statistic. Many of you will move away. 90% of the time that you have spent with your parents is up to this point. After you move away, you have less than 100 visits on average with your parents over the course of their lifetimes. So make sure that you enjoy every single moment with them. The other thing that I would recommend to you is to do something that you love. Americans, interestingly enough, are one of the richest people on the planet, but one of the unhappiest. We rank number 19 out of 20 on the happiness index scale. And it's not because of the things that we do or don't have. I believe it's because we don't do things with a purpose in every single day that we live. When you go out and figure out this thing we call life, do something that you love and you'll never work a day in your life. You'll enjoy every moment. You'll feel passionate about the things that you do. You're making a difference. You're committed something to greater than yourself. So if you're going to find that happiness in your life, do something that you love. Also would recommend that you be kind to each other. Education has transformed my life, but the single greatest thing that changed my life was an act of kindness. When I was 10 days old, I was put up for adoption. And a family that came in was a family of migrant workers. They had 10 kids of their own. They took me in. And one of the things that I asked my dad, I said, Dad, I said, you know, why did you take me in when you had 10 kids? And he said, because it was the right thing to do. It was the only discussion my father and I ever had about that. And the thing that I've learned is that being kind is the right thing to do. Be kind to one another. Take care of one another. The world needs compassion more than ever. And because you have an education, you'll be looked to as leaders in our community. You'll be looked to for answers to the challenges that we have. And kindness goes a long way in that work. And speaking of work, if you're going to be successful at whatever you do, whether it's own a business, manage something, take care of something, lead something, teach, whatever it is that you're going to go beyond our doors and do, work hard. The only successful, the only key to successful endeavors is going to be that you work hard, that you're committed. There isn't going to be an easy path forward. You be the first one there, the last one to leave. You work hard, you're committed in whatever it is that you do. And if you're going to spend that much time at something, do something that you love. Spend your time working at something that you enjoy so that you have that passion, that drive, that commitment so that nobody out hustles you, so that you're the best performer, so that you accomplish the things that you want to do because there isn't going to be an easy day. You work hard and that's the key to success. Be committed to the things that you love, and you'll never work a day in your life. So work hard, be committed, be kind, thank your parents. The other thing is for this group, you are not only the most educated individuals on the planet because of where we're at in society at this point, but you are also the people that is the first group of graduates in American history that will need to reinvent themselves on a daily basis. You have to be a lifelong learner. You're the first group of Americans that are going to have to fall into this category where you will continuously improve your skill sets, improve your knowledge, improve what you do, because life has changed dramatically because of a lot of different things, namely technology, and you have to keep up with it. So be a lifelong learner. Read, understand, ask questions. Probe and challenge what you are learning and understanding so that you can use those skills to better yourselves and you can continue to have a fruitful and long career. Be a lifelong learner. The last two things that I'm going to leave you with is this. One, be fearless and bold in pursuit of your dreams. You can do anything. I stand testament to that. Yesterday I was a migrant worker working in West Texas. Today I'm here with you celebrating your success. Whatever it is that you aspire to do, you can do it. We live in the greatest country on the planet. We have all the freedoms in the world and all the opportunities. And now because of the education you've received in our hallowed halls, 
You have the tools, skills, and all the knowledge that you need to be successful in your future. And the last thing is this as we close, because I promised I was going to be brief. For the older people in the room, you're going to know that life is like a box of chocolates, right? Because we never know what we get. But for this group, life is like a selfie. And if you want to get a really good shot, you got to know all the right angles, right? And most important of all, you got to be the person controlling the selfie stick. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for being a graduate of Brazelsport College. Best of luck with everything that you do. Dr. Solis, thank you for your words of wisdom to our graduates and their guests. Graduates, I congratulate you, each one of you, for your accomplishments, and I am certain that as you move on to your future endeavors, you will, remain, you will maintain the standards of performance which have brought you here this morning. Will the candidates for the associate's degrees please rise? President Solis, on behalf of the faculty, I certify that these candidates will have fulfilled the requirements of the Brazosport College and the state of Texas for the designated associate's degree and recommend the appropriate degree be conferred. By the authority granted by the Board of Regents of Brazosport College and the laws of the state of Texas, I hereby confer on each of you upon successful completion of all requirements, the designated associate degree with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto. It is now time to officially move your tassel from the right side to the left, a tradition which signifies this most important milestone in your life. Let's give them a big round of applause. You may be seated. Now, will the candidates for the associate's degree come forward so that the Brazelsport College Board of Regents Vice Chair, Mr. Robert Perriman, may present you with your degree. For the Associates of Arts and our Regents Scholar, we have Melanie May Hurd, magna cum laude. For the Associates of Arts and Teaching, we have Lacey R. Frazier. Darlene Sue Hurd, magna cum laude. Jerry Ann Jackson. Sharonda E. Jones. <laughs> Emily Louise Leandres, Kuma Laude. For the Associates of Arts, we have Adriana N. Anderson. Miguel Angel Arova, Jr.
Stacy Arovos. Kaya Beth Giselle Barbosa. Karina Dickman. <laughs> Laura Bolivito Vasquez. Madeline Michelle Campbell, summa cum laude. Jason Cantu, cum laude. Yadi. Litsi Cardenas. <laughs> Alexis Carlisle, cum laude. Kara <laughs> Ellis, cum laude. Taylor Don Etter, magna cum laude. Bernadette Fernandez, magna cum laude. Alia Flores. Katie Foster, summa cum laude. Caitlin Fryer, cum laude. Jocelyn Alexis Gonzalez. Pamela Gonzalez. Kristen Alexis Greg Gregor, magna cum laude. Abby Nicole Hammond, summa cum laude. Kayla Herrera. <laughs> Shelby Hines, magna cum laude. Mercedes Isis, cum laude. Tia Jesmer. Gracie Virginia Jones.
Caitlin Kenimer. Jacob E. Lamar. Julia LeBlanc. Madeline Lowry, summa cum laude. Perla Andrea Martinez, cum laude. Michelle McBroom, summa cum laude. Mario Melgoza Garcia. <laughs> Vanessa Montanez. <laughs> Ray Nicholas Montiel. Patrick Clothus Mora Jr. <laughs> Jalen Rose Moreno, summa cum laude. <laughs> Cheyenne Austin New, magna cum laude. Michael Wen, cum laude. Shamika Palomino. Shantae Parker. Matthew Pena. Heather Nicole Quick. Utimia Ramirez. <laughs> Sarah Elizabeth Royschel. <laughs> Ruben Rios. Andres R Rodriguez the third <laughs> Ashley Rodriguez <laughs> Graciela Rodriguez, magna cum laude. Madison Jules Rodriguez. Yeah. 
Robert Ruiz the third, the second, cum laude. Audrey Yvonne Sub Sub Silvas. Hayden A. Smith, summa cum laude. <laughs> Justice Aliyah Smith. Sarah Soto. <laughs> Taria Strambler. Sophia Nicole Thurman, magna cum laude. <laughs> Kevin Dean Van Hall, summa cum laude. <laughs> Ashlyn Marie Watkins. Zane Woolman. Woolman. For our Associates of Science degree, Shamaria Alston. Yuleni Angeles, summa cum laude. <laughs> Early Isabel Arichiga. Lenise Aradanda. <laughs> Chessa Barrow. Laura Ba, magna cum laude. <laughs> Emily Berkeley, cum laude. Terrace Bonner, cum laude. Desiree Bosquez, cum laude. Rylan Bosquez.
Sandra Maria Botello. Mariel Cardenas. Larissa Carrillo. <laughs> Natalie Carrizales, cum laude. Abigail Chi, cum laude. Arissa Natalia Contreras, cum laude. Mackenzie Rose Davis, magna cum laude. <laughs> Christina Del Hierro. Indiana Michelle de Leon, summa cum laude. <laughs> Ashlyn Eby. Rally Alastero <laughs> Alondra Esquivel <laughs> Emma Leanne Franklin. Naomi Garcia, magna cum laude. Brandy Nicole Garza. Trinity Garza. Jacob Glover. Amanda Gonzalez, magna cum laude. Giselle O'Gara. Magdalena Guterres, magna cum laude. David Hell, cum laude. Denise Hernandez, magna cum laude. Yeah. 
Fabian Hernandez. Gladys Hernandez. Joshua Michael Hillam. Summa Cum Laude. Brianna Holmes. Angelia Hurst, Cum Laude. Daniel Jonah Josie. <laughs> Zane G. Leal. Daniel Loeza, magna cum laude. <laughs> Julius Kane Mendoza. Yadziri Suicer Dai Nava, summa cum laude. <laughs> Abriana and Nino. Edward Hector Olivares, cum laude. <laughs> Denise Antiveros. Maria Ortiz. Boston Alexander Owens, magna cum laude. Glidel Padilla, cum laude. <laughs> Desiree Yolanda Pastore. <laughs> Yvonne Hey, cum laude. <laughs> James Anthony Peel. <laughs> Armando Pena Jr., cum laude. Elizabeth Perez. Yeah. 
Andrea Perez Hernandez. Esther Perez Toliando. <laughs> Itza Cantania. Stephanie Reyes. <laughs> Sadie Robledo, cum laude. Jorge Alberto Rosales. <laughs> Cassandra Sanchez. Becky Serna. <laughs> Catherine Elizabeth Simons, summa cum laude. Aubrey Nicole Smith, summa cum laude. <laughs> Enrique Sotelo. William Lee Staffieri, summa cum laude. Megan Strawn. Davin Strickland. <laughs> Melody Danielle Torres, magna cum laude. Jessica Trevino, cum laude. <laughs> Amaka Amaculet Udi Umi Oi, cum laude. Gabrielle C. Valenti. <laughs> Joe Christian Vitado, also known as Jean Christian. <laughs> Hannah 
Renee Ward, magna cum laude. Joshua Warnick. Lacey Darlene Witt. <laughs> Rachel Whittington, magna cum laude. Family and friends of today's graduates, thank you so much for being here with us this morning to share this celebration. We thank you for your presence. We recognize the importance of your support, not only today, but also throughout the entire educational process that our graduates have had. So on behalf of all of our graduates and the entire Brazosport, Brazosport College family, a heartfelt thanks to everyone. Graduates, along with the support system of family and friends, there are also other people who have played major roles in your success. The strength and quality of any college educational program is in its faculty and staff. These men and women have dedicated their entire professional lives to our students, to their learning, to the process, and to the principles of helping people achieve success through education. At Brazosport College, we are blessed with the outstanding faculty and staff that you see with us today. I would ask that they please stand and be recognized so you can join me in acknowledging their contributions to your education. Faculty, staff, please stand so we recognize your efforts. You may be seated. Thank you so much. Class of 2020 and those graduates participating today from the class of 20. 2020 and 2021, on behalf of the Board of Regents and the faculty and staff of this institution, I offer my sincere congratulations to all the graduates gathered here today. You have worked hard to achieve this goal and we commend you on your efforts. We wish you the very best in all your future endeavors, whether they be transferring to another institution, entering the job market, or anything else that you desire and aspire to do. Always remember that Brazosport College is your alma mater, your college of choice, and will always be your home. With the class of 2020 and those graduates participating today from the class of 2020, 2021, and 2022, please stand and turn and face the guests for one last round of applause from the audience gathered in honor of your commencement. Please be seated. We're almost to the end. We ask that with this last part that you all help us because we know that you want to get to your festivities and your celebrations and you're anxious to meet up with your graduates. But audience, please remain seated until the recessional exit the facility and then you can meet up with your family after that uh, process happens in the lobby. Thank you so much and have a great day. Graduates, congratulations.